Hey guys, Xavier here for Hum of the Earth. Today we are in Saltillo, Mexico. A city of about a million people situated in northern Mexico. Right now we're taking a look at some of the more central places in the city. There are in fact some things to see in Saltillo, but you'd be hard pressed to find the city in a Mexico travel guide. Despite the fact that Saltillo has some unique cuisine, which is definitely worth trying, especially if you enjoy Mexican cuisine, and it has a few museums that are really good, and some of which are even free like the museum situated in the town center that we're currently taking a look at. And Saltillo also has uh, some interesting history that we'll talk about a little bit later on in the video. Now the reason Saltillo probably doesn't rank high in the list of cities that uh, get recommended for tourists visiting Mexico is probably because of its geographical location given that it's situated in northern Mexico a region that most foreigners would consider off-limits due to the fact that it is known for being a breeding ground for uh, cartel activity even if those activities never interfere with tourists. So the footage that we're looking at right here is uh, was captured while I was bicycling to Saltillo from Monterey. This was a hundred kilometer distance that I was attempting to do in one day. So I arrived fairly late in the day in the Saltillo as it was getting dark. I was pretty tired because of the weather being so hot and because of I was developing allergies from I guess the new plants that were in the air. But thankfully I was already headed to a location where I would spend the night. I had already made arrangements to with uh, someone online via a website called warmshowers.org which is like a um, more popular website called Couchsurfing but this version was for cycle tourists so I was very excited to uh, meet and spend my uh, first stay with a I was, Mexican uh, getting hosted family by a, uh, an American that I was talking to speaking English but then when I got there he wasn't there it was actually only his Mexican family. They live in a uh, in a house with uh, uh, neighboring houses, uh, kind of like so. It's the wife living in one house, and the other house is uh, her sister, and they have lots of kids, and it's it's uh, pretty awesome. I learned how to make flour tortillas. All, all, the, all the misshaped ones are mine. All the round ones are theirs. <laughs> Big thanks to them for their hospitality. And I'll be staying another night, uh, at least one more night. I'm kind of under the weather. I've got some kind of allergies or something, so. The family was very gracious in letting me uh, stay with them and even fed me until I was feeling better, until I had gotten over my allergies. And when I did, they invited me to a birthday party. Here's the birthday boy who was celebrating his 40th and for the occasion he had uh, hired a band who had even set up a full stage with a full sound system, uh, just a basically a concert just for the people he had invited uh, to the party here. 
and all the relatives had brought all types of delicious food and of course many cervezas so needless to say I had a great time enjoyed quite a few tecates enjoyed dancing and uh, even flirting with a few Mexicans so yeah these were fun loving warm people that fitted the positive stereotypes that I had heard of the Mexican people the only time things weren't so cheery in Saltillo was actually on my way out uh, Google Maps had made me I take some I guess back roads if you could even call them that um, these neighborhoods of informal houses that were actually quite large um, so many of these uh, small buildings or uh, to put it crudely shacks that sometimes were you know guarded by vicious pit bulls and um, yeah I could tell that this was informal housing because there was just lots of trash everywhere it doesn't seem like there was any uh, city services so that's why I assumed that these people maybe didn't own this land and, and that's why uh, the city wasn't providing services to them But I still got the impression that the majority of the people living in Saltillo were living above the poverty line. And that's because there's quite a bit of industry in Saltillo. The largest industry being the automotive industry. Large international companies such as Mercedes-Benz, General Motors and Chrysler have large um, assembly plants in Saltillo that hire quite a bit of people. In fact, of all the vehicles made in Mexico, 37.4% of them, of the cars, are made in Saltillo for the whole country. And for the production of trucks, 62.6% .6 of them are assembled in Saltillo. Prior to the production of automobiles, Saltillo was known for locally woven sarapes or ponchos as they're more internationally known as. So these were locally woven out of wool ponchos or types of blankets that were often very colorful and contained traditional Mexican patterns and so the serape or poncho is one of the most iconic Mexican clothings maybe second only to the sombrero Spanish conquistadors arrived and settled in Saltillo as early as 1577 but Saltillo grew slowly due to the hostility from the indigenous Chichimeca people. So for quite a long time, Saltillo only had a population of 300 people. But by the 18th century, Saltillo was now a commercial center on the northern frontier, which served as a bridge from central Mexico to regions further northeast, such as Nuevo León, Nuevo Santander, Coahuila, and Texas. It also supplied the silver mines of Zacatecas with wheat for the workers. It never rose to great prominence, but did develop a commercial core and an agricultural and ranching sector that supplied its needs with surpluses that could be sold. Saltillo became administra administratively important at the end of the 18th century when a branch of the Royal, Treasur Royal Treasury was established in the city. Merchants, most of whom were Iberian Peninsula born Spaniards, constituted the most important economic group 
handling a wide variety of goods and selling in shops. Peninsular merchants in Saltillo married into the local elite society, acquired rural properties and sought lo local office. In the late 17th century, an annual trade fair was established, which carried Mexican livestock and manufactured goods to places as far as China and Europe. Saltillo could produce wheat commercially as long as there was access to water. But as with many other parts of the north, drought was a consistent threat. In the 18th century, there was a demand for draft animals, which Saltillo supplied to the army. In 1824, Saltillo was made the capital of the state of Coahuila and Tejas, which included the area of the current U.S. state of Texas until the Texas War of Independence and the founding of the independent Texas Republic. On the 23rd of October 1840, the Battle of Saltillo took place after 110 Texans and Tejanos crossed the Rio Grande and attacked the city as part of a campaign to establish the Republic of the Rio Grande. A separatist rebellion in northeastern Mexico which had Texan support. Modernity reached Coahuila with the arrival of the rail railroad in 1880. In 1890, telegraph, telephone, and street lighting networks were created in addition to the construction of cultural buildings, including theaters and plazas, and buildings of a social nature, such as hospices, civil hospitals, and sanitary structures consisting of drinking water and drainage systems. In fact, today, Saltillo ranks among the top Mexican cities for clean tap water. During the Mexican Revolution, Saltillo was taken in separate events by the forces of Victoriano Huerta, Francisco Villa, and then by those of Venustiano Carenza. Hundreds of peasants were forced to join these various groups. As a result, many fled to Texas, including aristocratic families. Saltillo's agricultural climate in the second half of the 20th century was rapidly transforming into industrial activity. Huge orchards disappeared and factories began to dominate the landscape. In the second quarter of the 20th century, Saltillo changed from agricultural and textile activities towards industrial activities with the creation of companies such as Sifunsa, Sinsa, Exito, and Molinos en Felix, among others. The true industrial explosion occurred in the 70s and 80s with the arrival of the car industry to the region. Companies such as General Motors and Chrysler among with their respective satellite companies or suppliers, came to Saltillo. Since then, Saltillo and its metropolitan zone are known as the Detroit of Mexico. However, a movement is currently underway to diversify the industry with the arrival of pharmaceutical companies, household appliances, chemicals, ceramics, and even parts of the aerospace industry. I hope you guys enjoyed this video of the different things you can see in downtown Saltillo, the cathedral, the casino uh, right here, Plaza 
the Armas, I believe, uh, with the little history museum in it. They're all, as you can see, in one kind of location here. So kind of a one-stop shop for uh, doing some touristy stuff here in Saltillo. Uh, there's also the uh, museum, Desert Museum, uh, which is supposed to be very good. I'm not sure if I'll be checking that out yet. Uh, if I do, it'll probably be a separate video. There's also that. There's the horror museum that I showed, and I believe there's another one. And uh, there's also supposed to be some uh, great food that I will probably check out. So, um, yeah, hope you enjoyed. If you're not familiar with this channel, um, I've also made a video of my bike trip from Monterey to here, which is very beautiful. And videos of Monterey, you can check that out. And to see uh, what my journey has been like from Canada to Argentina, you can head over to my website, followthehumoftheearth.com, and you can uh, subscribe to my channel. Have a good one.